Hello, my friends on YouTube. Today is the 24th, Sunday, the 24th of um, April 2022. Today's video is the response of Al Azhar University or Al Azhar <coughs> to the, di the direct and indirect attack on Islam. Uh, recently, Islam has been under attack, and I'm not against that because everyone has to really re-evaluate his position. Uh, some things I agree with, some behavior I disagree with. Anyway, let's start. There are two types of attack, even in military. There is direct and indirect. Okay, we're going to speak about the direct attack and what did the Azhar say towards these direct attacks. We have uh, a while ago, before the beginning of Ramadan, that we are is going on the month of Ramadan, which we are in now. Um, the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia came out and he declared that those who want to eat during the month of Ramadan, the restaurants should be open. People can eat, can drink, no problem. What I have witnessed, <coughs> excuse me, in Egypt as a child and until now, is we have about 10% of the population who are Christian. And of course, there are many people who are atheist and uh, let's say other religions or whatever. Uh, and these people don't really care so much for Islam. That's their business. Okay? However, these people during the month of Ramadan, they had to observe Ramadan and what Ramadan is all about. So, if I'm Coptic Christian living in Egypt, then I must not eat in public i shouldn't go to a restaurant and eat lunch or dinner uh, dinner probably because it's around the time of breaking the fast for the muslim but breakfast or lunch absolutely not absolutely not so uh in a way that was the trend and the uh, imams or the the religious authority they will tell you oh yeah yeah this they are in islamic country they have to obey the rules that muslim go with and now in the heart of islam saudi arabia this is arabia the arabian peninsula and the most influential country in this region saudi arabia declaring this nonsense no longer what are you going to do we didn't hear anything from Al-Azhar. For those who do not know what Al-Azhar means, Al-Azhar is a university in Egypt. But more than university, it's actually the, it is similar uh, to the Catholic, the Vatican. It's similar to the Vatican to the Catholic. It is the absolute authority that if something happened, they have to give opinion whether this is right or wrong. So when you have something like that, because one of the main pillar of Islam, pillar, because if, if you break a pillar of a building, the building is no longer a building. This building is not safe anymore. And that's the first pillar that it broke. Fasting Ramadan. Okay, it's one of the main pillar of Islam. And this is broken in the heart of Saudi Arabia. The crown prince, I'm really grateful that this man is there. He broke that. Did we hear anything from that absolute authority called Al-Azhar? Did he respond? Did he say, no, 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 you can't do that? No. 
because he pays his salary okay money money makes miracles okay that's number one uh, the current prince of Saudi Arabia broke that pillar we didn't hear anything from the head of Al Azhar to say anything positive or negative okay about eating and drinking you can get away with eating and drinking because that's not really registered directly in Quran or Hadith but uh, the founder of Islam Muhammad the one who brought this ideology the, uh, to us 1400 years ago he said there shouldn't be two more than one religion uh, or two or, anyway it, it will translate better like there is there shouldn't be more than Islam in Arabia that's why the Jews were kicked out the Christian they, they were all gone okay that's why you don't see Jews now and we're getting to that also the current prince of Saudi Arabia he stopped the loudspeaker at the time of prayer because it was really sickening to many people so he is telling them your time is up all that that you were uh, doing before with so much freedom is taken away from you so shut up practically uh, we have hadith hadith is what the founder of Islam left as his speech when he was talking to his followers whoever changes his religion kill him no court case no nothing so it's like uh, at the time of the french revolution take your take your neighbor to the jetin before he takes you so if you don't like your neighbor which it happened you call him infidel and you go to complain to the authority that my neighbor or this guy he left Islam he will have his head chopped off now is the opposite the current prince of Saudi Arabia he made it the opposite if you come and tell snitch on neighbor or anyone that he left Islam if you do that you will go to jail for two years this is this is 180 degree opposite of what's in the hadith opposite so instead of chopping the the head of the person who left Islam off no the person who is telling will go to prison two years I'm sure no one will tell now which is a good step people should be free they can decide to choose whatever they want have we heard anything from Al-Azhar about that? No. No. Is it important? It is very important because it is actually contradicting the teaching directly. Okay. As we go down in the list, it gets worse. Recently, United Arab of Emirat is starting to negotiate building a whole city for the Jews you, you could call the second coming of the Jews or the return of the Jews because they were in Arabia before that nonsense came huh? so they are going back and these are the people that they are described in Quran let's say in uh, uh, the second chapter the, the second chapter uh, verse 65 they are described as monkeys apes monkeys you are making a city with all infrastructure 
for monkeys huh okay and uh, they are also um, in in uh, chapter 65 verse five, I'm sorry chapter 62 verse 5 so at al juma that they are donkeys carrying encyclopedia because they they carry the Torah their the book of faith their book of faith they are like donkeys carrying important books or encyclopedia rather so you are making a whole city for the donkeys what did Azhar say about that nothing nothing okay uh, now in Morocco they are discussing marriage and divorce for Muslim people uh, the tradition in Islam that it's left for us for 1400 years is when a man goes to get married he it is actually business he buys a woman he pays dowry he goes and I'll take her for let's say two thousand uh, dollars I'll buy her uh, uh, gold for two thousand dollars and that's her goal and I'll pay two or three thousand dollars in case we divorce whatever amount of money they agree on they sign he give uh, the the money in the beginning to buy her gold and then he will sign in case if I divorce if he divorce if I divorce I'll pay her let's say if they agree on three thousand dollars divorce money in case if he divorced five years later let's say he found on uh, 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 how do you say that uh, the uh, ahuri um, one of the 72 version came from heaven to him and he wants uh, to marry her so he divorced let's say he doesn't want that old woman anymore she's been with him for five years she's no good anymore let's divorce her and get the new the new version okay I then he comes to her practically say I owe you three thousand dollars we agreed if I divorce I give you your money here is your three thousand dollars get out of here and she leaves that's the tradition that it was established 1400 years ago now Morocco is saying no 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 wait here when this guy married this lady he was just he just graduated from college and he was let's say if he's a doctor he was a small you know beginning doctor in a small hospital his salary back then when he started let's say it was five thousand dollars a month and therefore um, he put that amount of money however now he has his own practice he built a hospital and he is making fifty thousand dollars a month so two thousand dollars or three thousand dollars that he agreed to pay when he got married is nothing to him now and she was with him she went through thick and thin with him she she uh, carried the burden with him to get to that point and therefore it's not just the amount that he agreed on she has the right to have half of his wealth but this is against the Islamic tradition and what was left to us to practice this all these things that I spoke of it's it is equal to a, a bayonet in the heart okay somebody stab you with a bayonet right in the heart and that hurts yet we didn't hear one single response from the authority of the Islamic the, the Sunni faith I'm saying Sunni because the majority of Muslim are Sunni but we didn't hear from the Shiite either 
to condemn that. No. They know they are on the losing end. And the Azhar gets paid and financed mainly by Saudi money. And United Arab of Emirat did not start this step to build city for the Jews without the blessing of Saudi Arabia. And Saudi, once this happened, you mm. know that Saudi Arabia will be next. They just put United Arab of Emirates in the big, in the forefront so that later, oh, well, they are good people, the Jews, they were, we always been with the Jews, so make them a city here. And maybe they make the build, the, the, their temple next to the Kaaba. Let's see. Let's see, let's see. But it is very interesting. All these important things we don't hear from Al-Azhar. The total authority on Islam, we heard nothing. Now, let's see the indirect attack and this one that Al-Azhar spoke. No, I'm sorry, there is one more direct attack and I don't know if I call it direct or indirect. However, I'm going to say it. The Chinese Uyghur, the Muslim Chinese who are in China, the men are taken from their homes and taken for uh, a slave labor. They don't get paid for their work. They work, I don't know how many hours a day, but practically, is a slavery. The man of the head of the house taken to work for free. That's why you can buy a lot of cheap stuff. Because these are the people that they are opposing the Chinese authority. They work for free. And the economy of China prosper on the back of the people who don't agree. I don't agree with Islam. But this is a human right violation. Not only that, this man's wife, now they designate a Chinese Han soldier to make sure that she doesn't have meetings in her home, to try to do any mischief stuff. So one Chinese soldier is staying in the home of the Muslim man who is working to make sure that his wife is not doing anything wrong and meanwhile many women were raped got pregnant and they carried uh, they conceived from the Han soldier uh, this is similar to uh, during the Islamic invasion they called it um, the translation, I don't know if it will make much sense, but uh, they called it uh, making the, the womb of the woman Muslim. Making the woman's womb Muslim. That means a woman who does not believe in Islam, but her husband was killed and a Muslim guy took her, even though she doesn't believe in Islam, he can still rape her and her child will be a Muslim child. You see why India is afraid? They start with hijab now, and we're going to talk about that. Okay? They have legitimate fear in India. But all this violation <clears throat> horrible violation some is hitting Islam in the heart like the fasting of Ramadan this is one of the main pillar nobody speaking, is speaking about it Al Azhar the total authority is not saying anything no one else is saying anything and no one whether it is Turkey who the guy who is saying that he's totally Islamic from Iran, from uh, Egypt, Saudi Arabia, they don't care. They don't care. These people are marginalized. But I'm talking about these people as human beings. You're enslaving human beings. That's wrong. But that's 
human right issue is not an Islamic issue now. okay as a human being you, you should not enslave a man or a woman as a human being you shouldn't rape a woman this is a violation of her rights violation of her mind violation violation of her body that that's a, that's the main difference between a married woman and a woman violated practically the sexual act is the same but one is by four but against her wish against her wish but when a woman gets married to a man there, there is nothing wrong with doing that the thing is is violation of human rights and we didn't hear anything from the azhar now the indirect attack at this this when al azhar is coming out to speak okay things marg marginal things i'm going to speak about sweden now uh, i am not for burning any books any books okay it's wrong however if i bought a book if i am interested in burning a book of my books can I do that yes I can I bought it I paid for it okay I can burn it. I can throw it in the garbage okay it's my book I can do whatever I want with it so I'm against burning books but this guy if he bought that book the Quran or any other book he has the right to burn it yet we see violence and the muslim acting and reacting and fighting why none of these people nothing of the things that i said before irritated him or got him angry or got him to do something because it doesn't matter who is doing the violation the thing is if you are a jew or a christian enemy of allah we're going to react because you are infidel but the chinese communists they are atheists so it's okay they can rape these women huh we didn't hear anything from lazar okay now in india uh, I'm sorry, in, let's continue with Sweden. So, uh, about uh, Sweden, these people are co coming to re react because of burning one book. Did you Have you ever thought about all things that it is going on? The other violation that done in Muslim country by Muslims, and no other Muslim is talking about it, including Al-Azhar the main authority nothing but when india say no there is uniformity here and we do not want in public school we do not want hijab or niqab or covering the head or and that that if you are sending your child to a public school you have to obey the rules there you don't like it Put him in a private, him or her in a private school. Teach him yourself. But uh, let's say I go and I work, let's say for uh, British Airways or Egyptian Airways, and I uh, no, I'm sorry, British. Let's say British or an American airline, and uh, or my I'm sorry, my wife goes to work for British or American airline or whatever airline and she wants to put hijab and this airline does not allow any of her or of their employees to put a religious symbol whether it's Jewish Christian Muslim Buddhist no none and you accepted that you signed for that you cannot force your way whether you are Muslim or Christian or Jew 
to say no they must obey because this is my religion i respect my religion and they must respect my religion no they do not they don't have to respect your religion and that actually has nothing to do with your religion that is policy set policy they everybody has to follow it okay and this upsets al-azhar and the top imam of al-azhar uh, because uh, hijab hijab they have to allow hijab india tasted the pain of the muslim invasion they know what will come next they know and in in sweden the person who uh, did that burning the quran he actually knows the reaction how it will be and he wants to show the world the barbarism of these people and he succeeded he succeeded and here we have the top head of al-azhar coming out talking about they should allow religious freedom uh, now religious freedom is so important huh when it's in, in another country but in an islamic country religious freedom no 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 only in arabian peninsula only islam there's no religious freedom there but when in india we need a religious freedom okay they have to allow the girls to wear hijab cover their heads that's the religion their faith yeah and the sign of purity huh? as if no woman with hijab does not do bad things or immoral things or a man with muslim beard was never caught in of raping a girl hmm? I'm sure those who know what I'm talking about. Huh? Raping girls. Young girls. Well, not as young as nine, but 14. Huh? Check recently in uh, Indonesia. Hmm? So we have the head of Azhar now coming out saying the West should make laws to forbid insulting religion ah well I remember very well the, until now many Jews actually they are they, they make fun of Moses and the Ten Commandments and all of that many Christian they make fun of the Bible and Jesus and 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 many Buddhist they criticize Buddhism and so on and so forth and if you are so worried about all religion all that happened in the past we never heard you coming and saying no you should not put uh, the Messiah uh, like the guy who who painted Jesus in a urine literally in Europe okay yeah I understand some Christian were disgusted by that and I understand but they didn't go out to burn and destroy public property or private property no they didn't do that okay but they were upset I understand okay but what did the, the, this is a religion that you believe it's from Allah Christianity what did you do when, when this happened nothing did you say anything the head of al-azhar did you say anything no only when they burn a book that you can print 10 million more books and sell you won't burn that's they paid for it fine keep printing okay you are coming to talk about a book but to see that you are violating India because what they have seen of you before they don't want put their guard down and let you take more space because you will take over practically okay you are not talking 
you are talking to Sweden now and the whole West to make laws, huh? Not to burn the Quran. No, people here are free. Learn that, and if you want to talk, talk about that. We thank you very much. We hope to hear from you.